Well, we decided to take on the road. <laughs> That's uh, one thing. So, sell the house, quit our jobs, uh, sell everything we had. So, everything's here. <laughs> All we have is here. Hello, um, my name is Mikael. And uh, my name is Florian. We've been on the road uh, driving a gypsy wagon with our two Persian horses for about three years. We started in the southwest of France in 2018 and we've reached uh, Brittany, which is now in, uh, in 2021. So uh, it took us three years to get there, about 800 kilometers away. Well, we, when we first started thinking of traveling, because that was the idea, to discover places and people and things to do, uh, different ways of uh, doing things, we didn't think of, dry, of doing it with horses. We were thinking of maybe cycling or going with uh, a truck or something like this. And then we met people who, who did that uh, with their family. So we decided to build something uh, as light as possible and as respectful as possible for the horses, so they could pull it easily. And we do have one wagon, one carriage, and a small little trailer we can pull by hand also. In this version of wagon, um, that one doesn't actually have walls. It's uh, only a sheet and it's insulated from inside with a, a wall uh, lining. And it is quite specific because it opens up on the outside and that's the bed part. So it's like a little uh, butterfly. <laughs> we met 17 years ago. Ah, uh, yes, 17. <laughs> together 14 years ago. Wow, 14 years ago. We, we met one day and a week later we... We were moving we in together. <laughs> That's quite fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give me some some uh, loose cable. And then I'm going. We don't really plan much in advance. Um, most of the time, we don't actually know where we're going. So if people ask us where we'll be next week, we might have a direction, but we won't know exactly where. And that's mainly because we deal with horses and not an engine. So you never know what's going to happen. Uh, choosing to live and uh, go at horses pace is basically a way of uh, reaching a more organic way of life, a more peaceful, quiet and um, and slow <laughs> travel. It's also it's not just a travel, it's a way of life. Because when you're going slowly, you have time to think, you have time to think about yourself, you have to have to be true to whatever you do. You don't just speed up and let things go by. You have to deal with everything one step at a time. You have to learn how to uh, enjoy every moment and not just uh, try to reach for kilometers and, uh, and new exciting things all the time. You have to be happy with what uh, your journey brings to you, little by little, step after step, kilometer after kilometer. And the thing is, there's no aim to that expedition, to that way of life. So you're always happy with what you get, basically. You're not, never disappointed. <laughs> Yeah. 
You're never lacking food on the road, particularly when you're traveling with animals and specifically horses. You are never lacking food. The first thing people do is bring you food. Going to get water at the neighbor's place. Bonjour. C'est la tournée d'eau. As we said, we are planning for the horses first. So good quality grass, um, water. So it could be running water, it could be like a small river, a pond or something that's safe for them to drink. And sometimes we have to go maybe to the cemetery to get tap water. Um, but then for us we just need somewhere to park the convoy on a rather flat surface. And rather can be very rather sometimes, but, <laughs> but rather flat surface. We never in one place for a very long time, so we can always adapt. Obviously, if we have to stay for a long period, then the search is very different because we have to have a lot of food for the horses. They do eat a lot. As easy as that. Usually we are going in the river or yeah. if the river pass by. And how did you find her? Her? Yeah. They found us, <laughs> actually. When you were on the When street. we were looking for a place to stay. And they, uh, they say, well, we don't have room for, for your horses, but here <laughs> it's empty, go ahead. Nice, that's cool. And we called uh, the, the, the village and we told them, hey, we're coming. And here we are. <laughs> Particularly in France, there's a no law that was, well actually it wasn't a law, it was like a medieval uh, accord between the, 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 the lords and the peasants who didn't have land, because no peasant had land at that time, and they could uh, take their animals and go around in the lord's land to feed their animals. And that was translated into a law which is still valid. So basically if you do not have a land and you have a few animals to feed, you're allowed to go on common land. So nobody can actually say anything to you. There's one thing, the law's on our side. <laughs> and the other thing is we actually say we are arriving. And we say we would like to stay somewhere. It looks like this place would be good enough for us for a few days. Um, uh, we don't actually ask for permission. We just say we are arriving. Well, when we are um, actually planning a little bit, when we are calling maybe the town hall and the, the next call, uh, we are offering to show what we do. So maybe uh, uh, ask schools to come to us and visit the, the camp and um, see the horses and the, and the wagon. And in that occasion, we organize five different uh, steps where we can talk about horse pooling, obviously, and the horses in detail. We could talk about preserving water resources, for example, dry toilets, making your own um, washing products. Um, we can talk about washing your clothes by hand, etc., etc. So we're trying to plant little seeds in uh, kids' heads, <laughs> and through the kids we're planting seeds in the adults' heads. <laughs> so that's how it works. And when uh, we've done that, from one village to another, we're asking the schools to leave us with maybe a drawing or maybe pictures or something they've done after they've visited us and we bring that to the next school. So we're basically bringing news to the next village the way um, travellers used to do uh, up to actually quite recently <laughs> until there was radio and television. We're trying to think of this as, uh, as a very reasonable way of living and uh, having less means uh, working less, basically. So we set up um, a non-profitable organization that's called Roulopa, that's R-O-U-L-O-P-A, which means driving at a horse's pace. <laughs> that's what that means in French. All the activities are under that uh, organization and the organization pays for maybe repairs, um, the vet for the horses and the dogs, things like this. So we don't have much to pay ourselves. Vous cherchez des souris? Oui! Je cherche des souris, ma louloute! 
c'est bien maintenant, c'est bien. Allez, va, va avec Oscar, va chercher, va avec Oscar. Well, you have the freedom of your own time, which is probably the greatest freedom you can have. We don't have to basically uh, answer to a boss or <laughs> we can decide what we're doing and how much time we want to spend doing something. Uh... Alors, euh, ça c'était toi c'était moi ça C'était moi. But it's not just... Uh, flowers between the fingertails. I mean, you, you do have to do things, you do have to work on things, um, but you live with less. So that helps a lot. We don't have a house to pay, we don't have rent to pay, we don't have electricity to pay. Um, so once you have a, a few hundred quids, um, you're, you're good. So you don't have to, to work as much. And that's where liberty starts as well. Oh, that's your, oh yeah, that's your fridge. Cool. I mean, basically, the the um, the water that gets captured here mm. evaporates and and the calories inside are being sucked out and that's how it works so we can keep vegetables or maybe uh butter doesn't run out things like this obviously you wouldn't keep meat that way but... even now there's like a let's say 25 degree was uh, i think these days uh, um it, it actually works better when it's hot really yes because so if it's like 30 degrees, you can keep butter in it and it stays. It, it doesn't run, but yeah. it would it would obviously be a little a little soft, but it yeah. wouldn't run. And the best way would be to have potteries, like two thick potteries, mm -hmm. two like planting pots, big ones, and sand in the middle and water. And Please. then you can just cover up with a flat uh, pottery and put it right in the sun and the sun mm. would warm up the potteries, evaporate the water and the evaporation would would then uh, would the suck the inside. calories inside out and, uh, and keep the inside uh, a little cooler. It's not an actual fridge, but it helps. You have to be a little bit organized uh, specifically for the horses. I mean, you need to find food and water for the horses. And then for the rest, you can take your bike and go um, get bread or, or drinkable water. But um, we don't have to plan a lot in advance, really, and not as, as much. You just have to check that the path is OK, that it's not too steep. You're going to find a field somewhere. Everything is about mm. horses f first. The horses are part of the family, just as much as the dogs and the cats are. But they are also the central point of everything. If we cannot move the horses, we cannot move at all. If there is a problem with the horses, so you have that responsibility. It's not just a truck you can fix or you can leave behind and have another one. Uh, at some point we might stop somewhere and the horses will stay with us, obviously. We're not going to leave the horses uh, on the path. Um, going with horses was another way of not using petrol, not, uh, not using um, uh, energy that would, we would regret afterwards. And uh, having our horses as friends and as family and as uh, engines as well. We're going at, at the pace speed, we don't trot or obviously we don't go with the horses, we, we just go at pace speed. So that's about four to five kilometers an hour, that's something like three miles an hour, I guess. Even less than that, particularly when it's steep or it goes down, it goes down to maybe two kilometers an hour. Oh yeah, living like this, uh, we are not we don't have much time, well, we have time for ourselves, but we are meeting a lot of people mm -hmm. and it's quite rare that we are only the two of us, like a full day, without having someone coming. Mm. So you meet, you, There's always someone knocking at the door, yeah. most of the time. <laughs> to choose this way of life wouldn't be a good idea if you would 
wanted to go on your own on the road. <laughs> it's probably better to walk and hide in uh, some cave or something. <laughs> in three years, less than 10 days, we, are on, we were only the two of us. Yes. Yeah, less than Le wow. yeah, I don't even know, but yeah. even less than that. So somehow the curfew's not too bad. <laughs> we get less people at night in the evening. <laughs> It's one at a time. Each time you play, mm -hmm. you pick three to three dice. Six. You throw them. I have one brain. I live in. I mm. live it. Two steps. steps. It means that oh. I, uh, if I want to keep going, mm -hmm. I leave them there. And oh, oh, oh look eight. at that! No problem. You should stop. The cat is sweet. Mm. Eight. Just as much as uh, the land belongs to everyone. Just as much as trees didn't grow for one person in particular, um, we might have a few things, but uh, we don't fear that it could be taken from us, um, so there's no lock on the door, <laughs> basically. And just as much as people welcome us, they are welcome to come to us. Um, that's what we did before when we had a house, we were welcoming a lot of people. Um, and that's what we keep doing on the road. I mean, when people come to see us, we can share a moment and food, if we have food or something else. So, no luck on the doors, no luck on our hearts. Mm.